By only adding this little sign followed by a function name above your functions, you could save hours of coding and follow the dry concepts. Let's see how decorators help writing Python code more professionally by showing a real project scenario. So in this basic example, we try to access an example website. In case we receive great status code, then we return the response. Otherwise, we just return a text that says failed to fetch data. But when we call the function, here's how we do it in line 13. But we might also want to take a timer for these kind of functions because doing a request to an external website, sometimes it could take 5, 7 or even 10 seconds. Depends, of course, on the website that we try to access. There are a lot of scenarios in coding where you would like to know how many seconds a certain function takes. So in that case, in a normal scenario, we would go and we would use the date time library. And we would just go line before calling the function. And we would say start time equals to date time dot date time dot now. And by the way, if that's the first time you see the date time library, I'm going to be uploading a video about date time. Okay, it's a very useful library for capturing dates and playing around with times. Okay, so right after we have done this, then we call the function and then we should go ahead and say end time here. Then we should use an end time library a variable and we should also take the current time like that. And right after we have done this, then it's about time to see what's the execution time. So date time is actually a library that supports time subtraction. So I can just go ahead and say end time minus start time like the following. And of course, it makes sense to add a comment here like start time like that. Okay, so right after we have done this, then we could go and say print execution time dot total seconds. That's a very good method because it shows you the amount of seconds here. Now, if we bring our terminal and we run our Python file, then it's going to try to access this website and that is the amount of seconds that it took. Now, with a deep look to this project here, that is going to lead us to a lot of code duplication in the future. The reason for that is because for each function that you will develop for your whatever project it is, it might be a web scraping project, you have to start your timer by calling this function before calling the function and calling this function after finishing with calling your function. And then you have to go down and you have to calculate the execution time and finally print it. So this means that you have four steps that you have to repeat for each function that you will develop in the future in whatever project you're working on. And that's how decorators could be extremely helpful because they help you to write a base function and decorate with that function other functions. And that is the exact part where using them might be tricky. You might have seen decorators in projects like Django or Flask. Now we will start writing a decorator by ourselves and step by step we will understand the logic behind the decorators and why they make so much sense. Okay, so let's use a new file here in order to write in that file our decorator. So I'm going to name this new file my decorators like that. And I will use split screen here to show the files side by side. All right, so in the left pane, we will just say import date time and we will start writing the base code for our decorator. Now, we already know that those are actually functions. So we could go ahead and create a new function and I want to name this timer and currently I will just say pass. Now, if we go here and already try to use this as a decorator, then we are going to have some problems. So if we go above the function and we use the syntax at timer, then we are going to have some problems because first of all, we did not import the content. Let's do that from my decorators import timer. Now, why do we have still some problems? That's because when you use a decorator above the function, what the decorator will do behind the scenes, it will pass the function reference as an argument. And that is why it is going to complain how the timer function does not receive any parameter Although when it is called, it tries to pass this function reference. So that is why when you write a decorator, there is a convention to receive at least one parameter, which we need to name f, u, and c. 
just a shortened way to say function in Python. But this doesn't have to be named func like the following. You can name it whatever you want. But when we have a function that we receive a parameter with that name, then the developer is going to think to itself, okay, so that is about to be a decorator, right? So that's why we use conventions and you can see that the error is gone here. So after understanding the reasons why we receive this parameter, let's try to go ahead and customize our decorator here a bit. Now, the first thing that we like to do basically is to capture the start time, all right? So I'm just going to grab these two lines from here, these two lines from here, and I'm going to put them right there, all right? And right after we do this, then it's about time to call the function that is passed as an argument, right? So this means that I can just go ahead and say func like that. I'm basically calling the function. And right after that, we could go ahead and take this end time from here and paste it right there. And then we could complete the rest of the steps, right? We could take the execution time and we could paste it right there. And then we could write a nicer line, to be honest here. We could say print and we will use an F string. And we could say, let's refer to the function name that is passed as an argument here. So there is the magic attribute that you can use. So you will refer to the function and you will say dot double underscore name double underscore. And it will ensure printing the function's name. And we will say ren in. And then we will calculate the seconds, right? So if you remember, this was the method that we used. We're just going to grab this and paste this here, of course, inside curly brackets like that. So this is how our decorator looks right now. And I'm just going to make use of that. Okay, I'm going to delete everything from here. And I'm simply just going to call the function on the right pane. So let's make this pane bigger here and remove this import line. So this looks like something that is ready to work. And let's see if that will work. So I'm going to bring our terminal back here and I'm just going to run our file. All right, so you can see that we it's partly worked because we see that the function ran in this amount of seconds, but we do receive a weird error about how the non-type object is not callable. So this means that someone in our program tries to do an action like this. And why that happens? So this is something tricky to understand, but we will explain step by step. Notice how the exception comes from line number 14 here. Now, we know that decorators are tools that allow wrapping functions. And this means that this gives you the ability to do something before calling the function and after calling the function. Now, behind the scenes, what happens when we call the function in line number 14, the line of the exception, then Python goes to that line. First of all, of course, we import everything and then it goes to this line and it executes the lines of code line by line here. So it goes with start time like that. And then it calls the function that is passed automatically as an argument. So this means that the entire logic from here is already done. This means that these lines are already executed. So what is remained is this line and that line and that line. Okay. So this means that this function returns none because when we wrap a function with a decorator, then basically the automatic behavior is that the returned value will be the returned value from the wrapper. And that's bad news because although we try to add additional functionality to a function, but we don't want to mess up the returned value. And actually to show this one more time, I'm just going to go ahead and say return none here. So you can clearly understand if we bring our terminal back here and zoom out a bit, clear everything, then I'm just going to run this again. And again, it says non-type object is not callable. Now, just to simulate that, okay, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to return a random string here, right? Like that. And I'm going to call and I'm going to run this program again. And now it says str object is not callable. So this means that we messed up something by the way that we create decorators. Now, at the first stage, we might think that changing the return value here will start fixing our problems. So one thing that we could try to do is to assign the result of the function that is actually this function to a variable and try to return this one, all right? Maybe this will start solving our problems. But if we go to the terminal again and we run our program, 
then again, it's going to complain about str object is not callable. And this str now is coming from either this return or that return, because like we said, this whole thing returns whatever the timer decorator returns, and we still mess up the return value. So the classic decorator in Python is actually written by wrapping this whole logic inside another function. And that is the most confusing part when we write decorators because it's hard to understand that you have to actually write a nested function in order to a decorator work properly. So what we are going to do now, we will grab the whole code inside this function and we will tab one time and we will create another function inside this function and that function has also a convention name when we write decorators. It is named a wrapper. Again, you don't have to name it wrapper, but that is just a convention. And then right after you have all the logic inside the wrapper, then outside the wrapper, meaning inside the timer function, you could go and return a reference to the wrapper function. And this way, Python will not think that it has to call an str like before. Besides, it will understand that it has to call a function and then we don't mess with the returned value. So now if we bring our terminal back and we run our code again, then you can see that we don't have any more exceptions. And that way I could also go here and try to print the result and you will see that it will work. So if we call a variable here, excuse me, if we create a variable here like web1 and then we print web1, then we should receive the desired string, right? So if we run this again, then you can see that we actually receive the string, fail to fetch data from website one, obviously, because in a website like this does not really exist. So we received this as a return. And that's the perfect way to write a decorator. Although we have one more small problem, Let's solve this quickly. All right, so one more very interesting problem that you could have here is in the day that you'd like to add some parameters to the functions. Let's say that you'd like to make this function generic by receiving at least one parameter that we could name website, and then this function will be generic and we'll try to make a random request to a website. So I'm just going to grab this here and I'm just going to cut this from here. And down there, I'm going to pass in the website itself. Of course, we have to change the function name like that. Now let's see what will happen. So if we go back to the terminal and we run our program again, then you can see that again, we still have some problems. And it complains again in about line number 14 and it says type error and then some object that is inside the timer that is called wrapper takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. Now, what's going on here? So again, we miss the flow up because when we call this function, then the timer gets executed and this function is passed in the background as an argument to the timer. And then the wrapper goes inside here and it tries to call the function that is passed in here. So this means that we don't really pass the actual arguments that the user desires to pass. So that means that we have to add something very small to our decorator function to really make it function properly. We just need to pass in whatever arguments or keyworded arguments that are given to the func, meaning the ask data example. And the way that we do that is by receiving any argument that is not keyworded and any keyworded argument that is not specified. If we receive this in the wrapper level and we pass this in the function level, then we will complete our decorator. Now, if that's the first time that you see args and KW args, then I have a dedicated about that on my YouTube channel as well. So be sure to scroll to the description to watch the video if you want to. And now that we have completed our steps, if we go back to our terminal, we will clean everything and if we will run our file then you can see that everything works perfectly we could also prove that the website is really the website that we that we passed here we could go ahead and say print line requesting something from and then we can pass website this is a web, this is an f string i didn't write f before so excuse me now if we run our file 
then you can see that it shows the past argument. So that is really how you write a perfect decorator. And I really hope you enjoyed the video that explains the truth behind decorators in Python.